Now being 5.30, I'll call the May 6th meeting of the Plumpton Board of Selectmen to order. Um, first item on our agenda is we've got um, representatives from Plymouth County here to uh, talk to us about the ARPA program and present us with a check. So I'll turn things over to you, Tom. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Chair. We are thrilled to be back in Plimpton. Uh, this will is not our first time. It won't be our last. I'm going to turn it over to Commissioner Valenzuela, our chair, to do a little bit of introduction, some commentary. I'll wrap it up. And then if it's okay, we'd like to do a picture. We brought one of the big checks. I do want it for the record. We've already turned over the actual checks to you. <laughs> um, but we want everyone to know that Plimpton is receiving $89,403.40 through the Plymouth County ARPA program. Yeah. I'm going to turn it over to Commissioner Valenzuela <laughs> to talk about what that means. Sure. Thank you, Treasurer, Madam Chair, and the membership and those at home. It's always a pleasure to be in Plimpton. And the Treasurer is kind when he says he's going to uh, add commentary. It's usually whatever I forget. So my goal sometimes is not to forget to say anything, but then again, I need to leave him with some stuff to say. Um, so we do want to, uh, I do just want to send the regrets of my colleagues, Commissioner Ryan and Commissioner Hanley. Uh, they could not be here this evening, but we've been, uh, we've been ecstatic to partner with the town of Plimpton to be able to not only do the ARPA, but also CARES. Uh, the programs that we've been able to run through both of these federal um, grants uh, would not be successful without you folks, without your team here in Plimpton Town Hall, without Bridget, and without the entire Board of Selectmen. Uh, the success of these programs really does uh, depend on that collaboration and working together. Uh, the Treasurer's Office, uh, he's very modest, uh, does an incredible amount of work himself, uh, his special assistant, and one of the value adds that we believe we bring to the program and bring to the county is having us as a resource uh, to be able to execute these funds and use them for their highest and best use, which uh, HVAC improvements is certainly one of those uh, excellent uses. One time expenditures to go towards improving your current infrastructure uh, and doing preventative maintenance, which is going to save you in the long run uh, as a community. Uh, as the Treasurer said, this is on our first time, certainly won't be our last. We do enjoy our visits here. Uh, I do want to acknowledge Senator Moran and Representative Lenatra, uh, who have both been staunch advocates for the town of Plimpton and receiving these funds. I think the Treasurer will echo the sentiments they are constantly on the phone to him and I uh, making sure that Plimpton is receiving their fair share and I think that's the advantage of having Plymouth County doing these programs we we ran some comp sheets for the CARES Act and not to put down our friends at the state but it's a big state and and they have a lot of demands that they need to answer to especially in the major cities uh, and had the state done CARES and had the state done ARPA uh, smaller communities such as Plimpton frankly would have been left behind uh, and we were glad that we were able to execute these funds and distribute them at less than 1% administration cost, which is right now uh, the lowest average cost to administer in the nation. Uh, we received national recognition for that for CARES. Um, hopefully we're on track to receive national recognition for ARPA. Uh, and we delivered them quicker and we delivered you more funds. So uh, we're happy to keep that partnership going. Uh, and again, it's a privilege to be here. And I'm not sure what I forgot or left for Treasurer O'Brien, but I am confident he will be able to uh, say a few more words. Uh, you didn't forget much at all, Chair. <laughs> you <laughs> left me a few tidbits, but I'll try and weave them into the narrative. You covered all the basic points. Uh, we certainly appreciate the federal government recognizing the value add of Plymouth County. Our partners, Congressman Keating, our two uh, U.S. Senators, Markey and Warren, uh, recognized in this language that we were the appropriate entity to receive these funds and administer them for our 27 communities. Uh, the chair was good enough to mention our local legislative delegation. They have been hugely supportive of this effort. Uh, as others sometimes were wondering uh, how this would be managed and would the communities get enough money. I know that Representative Lenatra, Senator Moran stood up and said yes. And by the way, Plymouth County is going to do a bang up job, make sure that communities get their money uh, where they need it and how they need it. And then you folks know firsthand, because you're on the front lines, you get hit with a barrage of requests all the time, particularly after the pandemic. Many of them things that haven't been addressed for a while. You're not sure where those resources are going to come. Uh, these monies were for two separate projects. The first is the chair, as Chairman uh, Valenzuela mentioned, was for an HVAC project at Silver Lake. So you have a portion of that. Uh, how were you going to come up with those funds? This is a perfect use of those resources, provide clean air for our students. Uh, you folks were great with the application through Liz Dennehy and others that participated, uh, your two chiefs, your police chief and your fire chief. Uh, and so we were thrilled to approve that. Uh, and then your second one, you had some well monitoring that needed to be done, some trees that needed to be cleared. Where are those resources going to come? 
and you've got other obligations. You've got public safety, you've got schools. How are we going to take care of these projects? Submit to ARPA. Uh, and you did. We approved the project. Your submissions have been fantastic. So again, credit to your team. Uh, and please make sure when you get a chance, thank them for all their work because we've made it fairly easy to submit, but it still takes some time to make sure you have all the documentation. You've got to check off all the right boxes. Um, as I mentioned, there's still some money left. Plimpton has some applications in the process. We'll continue to work with your team to make sure because the one charge the commissioners gave me as the treasurer is no money is being returned to the U.S. Treasury, not a penny. And I was very pleased that under CARES, we were the first organization in the United States to spend every penny, and we didn't have to return a single cent back to the U.S. Treasury. Uh, ARPA is a bigger challenge, uh, but we're on track to do that with our partners in our 27 communities. So we'll make sure the money that's allocated for Plimpton gets to Plimpton uh, to do these projects that you need done. Uh, so we value that partnership. We look forward to continuing to working with you. We thoroughly enjoy coming to Plimpton. I mentioned how gracious you are whenever we come. You roll out the red flag. My favorite story is uh, during CARES, we had a very busy day, one July. This was the latter stop in the day. You were the only town that thought to provide us with some water, which was greatly appreciated. I think my commissioners were about to mutiny against the treasurer. Uh, and so uh, it's just a great partnership we have. We love coming here and thrilled to be here this evening. So thank you. I don't know if there's anything you want to add. We are hoping to do a quick photo uh, with you so that we can prove we delivered money to Plimpton. Well, I think we all appreciate the, the money. It makes such a difference when funds are so tight and we have important projects to do to be able to work with you guys so that um, you're able to fund important things at the, at the Dennett and um, at, at, in other places that, um, that there's a need, but we may not have been able to fill it without your assistance. So thank you. We appreciate it. John? I think... Uh, I wish Elizabeth Dennehy could have been here because I know how closely she works with you. Uh, I think one of the reasons we're in this position is because we've got Liz. She's an excellent town administrator. But thank you. We really appreciate this. Yeah, I would echo that sentiment. She stays on top of it, and we enjoy working with her, too. Good. Did you have anything you want to add? I sort of echo all of that. Um, we're a little tiny town, and boy, we appreciate working with you guys and the help you give us and you make it easy. That you do with managing the funds and all the reporting that's required, you make it easy for us and we appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much. I know the chair mentioned that. It is a, an administrative challenge uh, and so our resources are dedicated so you guys don't have to worry about that with these funds. So we can, if you, are we allowed to come up behind? Yeah, I don't absolutely. Know what, what protocol is, sure. if we get permission from the board. And we'll uh, take a quick photo. Did we bring water tonight? <laughs> I think we've got the bubbler. Yeah. <laughs> if you want water, we'll get you some. Yeah. No, we're good. For your road trip to Duxbury? Yes. <laughs> How do you want this? Uh, this is going to be perfect if we can have chairs. Oh, what, why don't we move this chair? Oh, that's a good idea. So that we can. Yeah. The chief doesn't want to come up and join us? Do you want Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Do you come up? Come on. We always, always like yeah. having law enforcement yeah. on, in our pictures. Yeah. One on either side. That is very true. And this is great. I mean, the check cover is like everything. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great. Great. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Good Can we you. keep the check? You have the real ones. Okay. You keep these. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. We do. Right. This one. <laughs> we are very right. No, we're very active. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> we <laughs> use our checks. Can you? Um, yeah, no, we drive. Oh, that's awesome. We're very, very economical. You guys are super. <laughs> I want to you. Well, thank you guys. It's very much our pleasure. Thank you. If sometime this year you I would, any very, I would very much love to. I'll do my best to be entertaining. <laughs> pick the topic and we'll go. Liz, Great. Like this for me. Oh, are we here? Doing the work? Oh, yeah. Oh, he's in and out. Oh, yeah. Good to see you. All right. We'll talk soon. Yep. See you. Great to see you. Good luck. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, so next item on our agenda is appointing Matthew Hickey, a special police officer from May 6th until um, of 24 to June 30th, 25. Um, do we have a appointment slip for him? Yes, you do. Okay, any questions? No questions. Okay. All right, I'll make a motion. We appoint Matthew Hickey as a special police officer, effective May 6, 2024, until 6 30, 2025. Second. All right, um, all in favor? Yes. Aye. Yes. Okay, thank you. I have to get a pen. All I have is a pencil. All right. Thank you. Can I borrow your pen? Oh, okay. hold on. I don't think that's a pen. Try that one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, so next we have got um, Chief Ball and uh, Lieutenant Hoffman here to talk to us about a couple different matters. First, the traffic safety campaign update, and then we'll get a general update on the police department. So I'll turn it over to you guys. <laughs> Good evening, select board. Good evening. Just an update um, for April was distracted driving month. Um, I had the officers handing out flyers for hands-free for informational packet um, on the back uh, we had 303 motor vehicle stops with 108 of them being for uh, hands-free using cell phones um, May is click it or ticket funds are a little bit low now since we had a lot of um, everybody's been taking part of the grant they, they like being out there um, so that they're, they're, they're using the time it, that additional officer has been very helpful um, we do have a radar sign that is going to be going up on Center Street. Uh, Highway Department has that. Um, the emails have been a success. Uh, people email me if they have any traffic concerns. Usually they involve their telephone number. I call them directly and ask, well, what do they need? If we can use the driveway, what time is it? You know, and that's been a success. And um, they, they've called back to appreciate, you know, say thank you for that. That's great. Um, we also have our bicycle helmets in. Uh, the plan right now is for the bike to school event. We're going to try to see who needs helmets, new sizes, or doesn't have any, and, uh, and stop from there to, to give away some of these bike helmets to the kids that need them. Do you have a date for that, Dan? Uh, right now, it's scheduled for June 7th. June 7th. That's the right to, bike to, right bike to, to school. school? Yeah. Okay. And that's it. Great. Sounds like you've got a lot of good things happening. Thank you. Looking forward to the bike to school and the Memorial Day Parade. Do you feel like we put any dent in the speeding problem? We do. Um, it's just always that same phase of once you're gone for a week or two of that impact area, they start going back with the routine. Um, so you just find yourself jumping around from street to street to street, shutting it down, and then trying to get back there. But it's just less and less because you got to go over to West Street. And usually I have someone that there might be an email that's backed up where I know Spring Street's the next street because we've already had a complaint over there. So then after a week, I send them over to Spring Street. If there's no emails coming in, sometimes I'll have them sit on that one street for two weeks. But it's it. Every shift, they're, they're, they're going out and hitting that area. Are they predominantly in town or out of town? Out of town. Out of town, yeah. So we're writing tickets for those people? I mean, that's a pretty big deterrent. It's, it's both. A lot of them are money tickets, then there's the written warnings and the variable warnings. Um, I mean, you, I could sit on the, the, the intersection up here and almost every other car seems to be on, on the phone. So you can pretty much write money tickets to everyone. A lot of it just wants to be informative. They'll be like, you're not to be on your phone. You are gonna be stopped, you are gonna be warned. And now that will show when we run them again for that stop, it'll show they've previously been stopped for that. And that's when the, the money citation usually comes into play. And that's the same for speeding, generally. What's that? Uh, sort of a, a, a notation of a warning, and then next time, yes. Yes, uh, it, yes, it is. something more substantial. Yep. The one we're doing now, click at a ticket, not having a seatbelt on is not the primary offense for us to be stopping. Usually that's a secondary offense. So you get stopped for speeding, you notice the seatbelt's off, and you can write them for the, the seatbelt being off. But we're not to stop vehicles for that only primary offense of not having a seatbelt on. It's hard to tell anyways, I would think. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's so quick when they stop, reach over to the glove compartment that they kick it off. You'd have to observe it, you know. And if, if you didn't observe it, you couldn't tell if they took it off right away and they're yeah. saying it, then, you know, it's their word, so. 
surprising that people still don't wear seat belts. Interesting. It is. Yeah. yeah. With, uh, all the data out there. You can but, lead uh, them, but you can't make them drink. No, yeah. no. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's funny to kind of echo what the lieutenant said. Um, you know, realistically, it's, you know, I look at the numbers every single month, just like you know, Lieutenant Hoffman does when we do our grants and middles. Like, the percentage of out of town is actually like 80%. So it's actually very high as opposed to in town, you know, traffic stops. Because I think, quite honestly, I think, to Mr. Russo, your question, I think people locally are informed because I still, case in point, I was just at a facility today. We're looking at some different equipment that's going to be donated to my department. And I walk in there, you know, and they talk about Plimpton. And it's still that mantra, what we always would talk about. And again, you guys, growing up in this town, you guys knew kind of what it was. I heard about it when I came here in 2015. And, but, I think we institutionally, like within the community, I think people still feel that we have a heavy presence and realistically adding on the additional resources with the grant, I mean, the traffic stops are through the roof percentage-wise. Um, so I, I think you, you think the townspeople see it, um, and then the people that are cutting through is the cut through community, right? Um, they also start to feel the effects of it as well. I really truly think that, so. Um, but the numbers, to, to Lieutenant Hoffman's point, we were afforded a grant that was, um, you know, X amount of dollars, I think it's $40,000 for overtime opportunities. And the amount that we've been out there enforcing traffic, well, realistically, we're gonna run out until June, you know, with July, August. So it goes to show how much we've been out there with enforcement, and now not every one of them is is a money ticket. You know, some of them could be the, you know, hey, just so you know, you know, help handhold device, you know, it's, I want you to be aware of it. Um, but the percentages are, are extremely high, so I give a lot of credit. We have a lot of new people, a lot of new faces. I'll kind of touch upon that, you know, when we get on to State of the Union type of dress. But we've been very active. With, with I haven't heard anybody complain about the police being too active. Yeah. Not one. No, yeah. I, I haven't either. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Great. Good. Well, Keep it up. Can I ask so a question? We can post that out there to let them know this is coming. So slow and, down. Yes, so yeah. as soon as you get pulled over, you you have the, that's on you. Yeah. You know? Have you had the repeat offender with the phone? Okay. So where you've given the. Ver I don't know. I don't know if we have. Not that I've known. Yeah. yeah. But I'm sure if you you know, I'm sure you you could. And if it hasn't happened yet, that it 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 could. It just shocks me. Yeah. Like everything oh, else. Oh, it's like you, so you, clear. Like down, down the, the phone, seat like, is down. What am I doing? You know, you know better. You're like, I'm oh, going to veer off the road. And then a week goes by, and old habits kind of come back. Sure. When you see it all the time, you're driving behind somebody, yeah. it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 Put down the phone. Right. You don't even have to see them. They weave. Yeah, they're just weaving. You know, weaving. they weave, and you they know. Hit the car, <laughs> and then they're back. <laughs> we had it happen today to be candid. You know, an officer made the traffic stop. I was coming back from that facility over in Middleborough and backed him up. And that's what that's what the precursor went to the stop was. That's what initiated the stop was the fact the person on the phone all over the road. Yeah. So yeah. You get a lot more of admission of guilt when you come up on the driver who's smiling, sitting, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are speeding. Usually, they'll try to argue. Right. You know, I wasn't going that fast. Yeah. But the cell phone, they're just like, you got, you got me. Yeah. You know, it's right in front of my hand. I, you know, you saw it. So, yeah. well, great job. Well done. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, Chief. How about Police Department general update? What, what was that? Um, so general update, police department, um, to kind of re-echo what the lieutenant said, very busy with traffic. Obviously, end of year budget stuff's been really uh, cumbersome, trying to get all the numbers in line. Um, I give Liz a ton of credit for kind of helping me walk through that a little bit towards the end here um, with budgets and finances and things like that. So um, we're still growing. <laughs> we have a lot of interest within the department. Um, new opportunities for my troops over there. We've opened up different opportunities through SEMLEC, Southeastern Mass Law Enforcement Council. So getting them acclimated into these different specialized units, which really, you know, I know we've all kind of talked at you know, different times, but I think we're really combating attrition. And that was one of the biggest things that I really wanted to kind of stress in the, in the conversation with everybody is that you know, when I first came here, it seemed to be a revolving door. And us getting involved in a lot of different things that we do now, it's why we've had a lot of people come in my door, why I've had a lot of people stay. Um, and I give the board a ton of credit, too, as far as even contract-wise. These, these officers are happy here. They're getting opportunities that they didn't have in other places. So the State of the Union, I think, 
overall, we're really growing, but we have the right people in place now. And that means a lot to me, and it's the support of the board, to be completely honest with you. Um, so we are doing two new promotions. I know we'll speak about that at some point tonight. Um, Nate Valente coming in administratively to kind of help out as a sergeant <coughs> in the whole process and kind of come, you know, work with me on a lot of these different growth avenues that we have within the department. Um, and kind of delegating the positions a little bit differently. And Kevin Brower, he's been acting as a sergeant for the last, uh, God, four or five months or so, um, but that came to fruition too. Um, with a full-time opportunity for him. So him refocusing on patrol to kind of augment what Lieutenant Hop is doing with a lot of the traffic you know, directives and things like that. So kind of putting the key players into place to kind of own certain processes, supervisory, and getting supervisors on every shift. That's another big part of this as well. Um, you know, along the days we always joked about it, the, the single office shifts, we're finally away from that, which is great, and having supervision on every one of them. Because you want to talk about liability, it's a huge liability. So again, the affordability for me to be able to have that it also, you know, um, for the town to have the comfortability that we have the staffing situation the way we want it to be where it currently stands right now. I can't thank you enough. I think we appreciate everything you do. And then it seems that there's uh, so much excitement over there and a lot of positive energy, and it's just been wonderful to see. And, and these aren't, um, these are seasoned people that are coming through your door now wanting to work for you in the town of Plimpton, and it's really, it's exciting. Sure. It's not like these people are straight out of the academy. These people, some of them are, were officers in other communities, and um, and they've come here to work for us, which is, right. it's pretty exciting to have um, such a, a solid team over there. So we appreciate what you guys are, yeah. are doing. Uh, to, I mean, to go even a little further on that, I mean, it's not even really just officers coming through the door. I've had sergeants, t detectives, uh, and so people of rank that have been, you know, in this business or, you know, in this, you know, field for a lot of number of years to really try to, like, augment what we need to here. Um, so it's worked out well. We, we've really got some really great, you know, staff, men and women over there, and we're getting there. We're getting I think we made a lot of progress. Um, I, you know, the thing I get excited about is the community involvement. Right. Uh, I think in the past I've been here a long time and it, it didn't seem to be that community way back <clears throat> excuse me so I'm very pleased that we're seeing that and I think to the extent you can build on that it just makes it better for everybody and the fact that you team well with the fire department I think is a huge uh, a huge step forward yeah. that wasn't always the case no you know and, and this isn't and I appreciate you saying it. You know, I always joked with people in regards to, you know, the team aspect here in Plimpton. And, you know, I care about Mike Sloss and the library detectives, Dewey Decimal System. I think you and I joked about it. Yeah. I'm going to make sure that Curious George is in the right category as opposed to, you know, where the, the Odyssey of the Iliad is. You know, <laughs> I, I, I care because it's team Plimpton. And I, and I like to echo that from, from the lowest subordinate, I hate to use that word, from the lowest patrolman to, you name whatever office throughout this community. I care about that team aspect. So um, I think we have a really good foundation to build off of. I really truly do. And I don't want to keep saying it, but you know, it's it's a it's a credit to the, to the board, quite honestly, for allowing us to kind of bring that. The community stuff that's always a low hanging fruit for me. That's the easy stuff for us to do that we never hit home on. And it's not you know, it's stuff that I wish we could have done sooner. But we're there now. Now we have kind of like buckets of when we know we're executing certain events, what's coming up annually, you know. That town engagement is, is, is paramount for me. I, I yep. love that stuff. I absolutely love that stuff. So, and we do it really, really well. And I don't hear a thing back negative, yeah. which is, you know, sometimes <laughs> the best thing. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't necessarily the case, yeah. But, uh, you know, and, you know, just the fact that, like, the speaker's program, there's a police officer comes, if there's a meeting here like we had last weekend, Offices here. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, the exposure is great because yeah. most time you're riding around in the car and yeah. it's hard to really engage. It's nice to change it up. Yeah, it is it nice is. to change it up. It's yeah. fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. thought I'd have to be like a veteran to attend the veteran breakfast and no, you know, I enjoy it. They do enjoy me being there. Oh, sure absolutely, oh, absolutely. Sure yeah. Yeah. Great.
Anything to add, Mark? Oh, uh, yeah. I said before, a little tiny town. We like to think we're unique, and we probably have to be unique. And the esprit de corps has to be part of what draws people. And you guys are pulling that off. And um, um, God, I think we really appreciate it. And if things are going well over there, we can direct our attention to other things, which is great. So, um, well done. I appreciate yeah. it. Well, yeah, well done indeed, and um, the community engagement is just amazing. It's, yeah. it's so fun to, to see everybody, all the likes and everything uh, on your Facebook page and what you've got going. It's, um, it's great, and you're an important part of the community, right. a very important part, and it's nice that, um, that you're engaged and out meeting people, and it's, um, it's a win all the way around. Yep. So, team Plimpton, I like it. Yeah, yeah, Team Plimpton indeed. So mm -hmm. thank you yep. very much. Thank you very much. All right, so do you guys have anything else for us? Y'all set? I think I'm all set. Yeah. Okay. Good. Nope. Okay. Close right. and engage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thanks for the updates. Yep, absolutely. I'll see you over in a few. Good night. Thanks. Well. See you later. All right, so. Um, <laughs> Town meeting preparations, if anything. Do you have anything to share? I mean, I think you mailed the warrant to you, didn't you? Yay. Yeah. Yes, so they'll arrive tomorrow? They should arrive tomorrow. Well, they go to Carver. I can't speak for Carver. If you have a P.O. box, you'll get it tomorrow. Okay, great. But Everybody it gets, it's Carver, and then Carver then distributes to. Yeah, but it'll in. definitely be this week. But it will be this. Yeah. It should be there. If you don't get it by Wednesday, I do have a few here in Okay. That I am bringing to um, town meeting. Okay. But if they need it, it also is online. Okay. So they can view it there. Great. But they have been shipped out and done, yes. Beautiful. Where is it online? Bundled. A, I would have to look at that. I, I And if it's not, I, Brian Bassa can get it up tomorrow. Just because I know the checkout line in the supermarket, as soon as that goes out, this, that becomes the discussion yes. of the, the yes. day, the hour, I the week. I heard that there was a little printing in the paper. So, um, but yeah, it should be smooth. Great. But it has gone out. Okay. Thanks, Bree. All right. How about warrants paid? $19,793.42. Right. And that's been a couple of weeks of warrants because okay. it wasn't right last time. All right, so we don't have um, Liz with us. We don't have a town administrator update. Any correspondence? Yes. Okay. I have. Uh, we have a couple of requests for use of town property. Okay. The Garden Club for Saturday, May 18th on the green. Okay. So if we could put that, and the uh, fire chief has already signed. And Matt's here, so we could have Matt sign as well. Sure. Yep. Excuse me, chief all. Yeah. Um, and I'll let highway. I don't know if they usually do any. They put a barrel out maybe that says pedestrian walking. Okay. But I can check with him on right. that. Right, perfect. Okay? I haven't yeah. signed anyways. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, I'll make a motion. But I'll that ask if they'll do that for them. Something. Garden Club uh, mm -hmm. to use the um, town green Saturday, May 18th. They'll be setting up at 7 and um, they should be wrapping things up at 1 o'clock. And um, it's always a good one. Yeah, it's always a good time. Yeah, a lot of uh, Cal really lilacs a couple years interesting ago. Um, plants that they have up yeah. too. So it's a lot of good stuff. And they've got it um, a Facebook page now too that they've promoted this with. So good stuff. All right, so got a motion. Do we have a second? Uh, second. All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, so that can go to Matt. And then I'm going to give you a pen back. Oh, and then we have Pays has another. Okay. Oh, this has to be pretty cool. We're gonna skip this because I believe you already did this. What's it for? It's in Belltown Gazebo down. This was for opening day. It must have oh. never did you ever Okay. We can just Best. Okay. Okay. No. Would you like to just sign it? That sure. one? Okay. Just so I have it and sure. she did the right thing. <clears throat> I know I wasn't here for one I don't think the folder was taking you guys at a quick meeting. 
I think that just needs the one. Yep. That's good. This is for, um, from Eversource for some work that they're going to be doing. Okay. Oh, another one. So. Thank you for finding that. Do we need a motion? Um, I don't think so. I don't. It's just normal. Stuff. No, I, I just, highlighted what was. It says delivering safe and reliable energy is a top priority. They're working closely with town officials and will continue to do through do so through all phases of work. Looks like this is at Five Palmer Road, which is here. So they're doing some work here at the building. Or is this addressed to us? No, service it's, address is here. I don't know why they okay. do that. All right, so, it says, so I don't know if this will is include a... excavation activities, traffic impacts, and temporary interruptions to your natural gas service. Mm, yes. mm. And the construction takes place between 7 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. It doesn't really give any specifics. I'm not sure if this has to do with the, um, the project out back, possibly, Hello. the Hello. recreation project. Uh, for gas? Maybe? I think yeah, no. it's gas, though. Yeah, I don't know. So it's was gas. Okay. But I think we should go ahead and guess. Okay, all right, so there's Just really... acknowledge it. Yeah. That's what I okay. usually... Okay, all right. I'm good with that. We have another use of town property, um, Siobhan Green, to use the old townhouse for a meditation. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I know a lot is of people... A, this is a special... Because they use it every Tuesday night. This is something different. I think she does a thing an all day okay. sort yeah, like of that. retreat. Right. She does. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, I'll make a motion that we authorize Siobhan Green to use the um, old townhouse on June 9th for uh, a mediate meditation. Meditation, not mediation. Activity <laughs> from 8 until 4. Uh, looks like. Um, they're not expecting a whole lot of vehicles, only seven, so um, it should be a, a nice little group. And it's the Plimpton Mediation Group. So a motion to um, authorize them. Meditation. Should I say mediation again? I do that all the time. <laughs> all right, did anybody want a second? Second. <laughs> all right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, my gosh. Um, <clears throat> Doug Reese wrote a letter to us about the doing some of the work that he did at the old townhouse. All right. He did some is, tree work. Um, so he volunteered to take down two peggy cypress bushes located on either side of the townhouse, the old townhouse. He planted them several years ago, but because they haven't been maintained, they've gotten too large and appear that they have damaged the face of the building. He spoke to Rob for a lot from the highway superintendent who said he would gladly chip the bushes. Uh, he, he also wanted to trim the two Japanese mountain and Andromina, also two bushes on either side of the front door. So um, I believe we told him that yeah. uh, it was okay for him to go ahead yeah. and, um, so and maintain yeah. these uh, the shrubs. Okay. <coughs> right. I saw him after it. Okay. He did a nice job. Yeah, I thought so too. Pretty when I went by, I gave well, him thank a you, Don, very much for doing yeah. that. And then um, this is regarding Jason Frazier's. Oh, yeah, this is great news. Nice, lovely news. All right, so um, we got a letter from um, the governor, Maura Healy, saying that she was pleased to reappoint Jason Frazier as a member of the Advisory Commission on Local Government pursuant to MDL Chapter 3, Section 62. Before commencing your responsibilities, you must take an oath of office. The appointment will be void unless the oath is taken within three months of the date of this letter. Consistent with the statute, your term will expire on January 15, 2025. Lieutenant Governor Driscoll and I appreciate your willingness to serve the Commonwealth in this capacity. Congratulations on your appointment. So, uh, well done, Jason. It's nice to have representation at such a high level. He does such we're, an amazing we, job. We're lucky to have him. Oh, we're, we're so right. lucky to have him. Okay. Is that it? That it? We're good. Okay. All right. So, that's it for the correspondence. So, we had minutes from 422. Did um, everybody get a chance to read those? I believe I did. Yes. Did, did you? Okay. All right. I think that um, I, they looked good. I didn't write them. <laughs> Who wrote them? Mark, you wrote them for 422. Oh. Or was it Liz? They Liz might have done them. Oh, the 422, the last meeting, that was Liz. Yeah, Liz did those. Um, and Liz I did really those. appreciate, she's not here to say it once again, but I really appreciate, that was a complicated thing to take the minutes on, and she did it um, really skillfully and masterfully. 
Okay, so no the, surprise. <laughs> yeah, no surprise. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes from 422 as written. I'll second. All right, well, all in favor? All right. All right, okay. All right. John, you um, second? Before no. Before we go good. into executive session, um, how about some raves? Well, I have a rave for the uh, people who turned out for the uh, meeting on Saturday on the fire station feasibility project. There were 35 people, and uh, I thought it was well done. It was a very good presentation. So, that's my rave. And to Mr. Wilhelmson, because he's been uh, shepherding this whole project. He knows this inside and out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I do. Um, I think it's the first time I've heard the term uh, Team Plumpton. I love it. I mean, it's, a, it's a great catchphrase. Um, and it, it sort of um, brings forth my rave, particularly this time of year, town elections coming, town meeting coming up, um, the whole project um, that's been going on here to try to professionalize uh, town services and town offices. And I think that's something this board has been prioritizing and working hard on for the last few years and it clearly is one of our um, uh, um, uh, uh, clearer successes and uh, really appreciate for everyone that um, that works on that and the degree to which we're actually exceeding succeeding on that yeah I like that team fun to too It'd be fun to do something with that Off we, we have shirts made up. <laughs> Blue for you, red for the fire. You let me know. <laughs> <laughs> that would be yeah. very cool. Um, my rave is um, for the great work being done by the police department, and um, it's it's just wonderful to see the the teamwork. No, um, I'm not trying to be um, wise about it, but um, it is. You put together a great team over there. Everybody seems focused. You're firing on all cylinders get the job done and um, it's really appreciated so thank you so much for your hard work um, and then um, ARPA you know thank you to the Plymouth County for um, subsidizing us on important programs that we wouldn't be able to afford otherwise right. so uh, it's been a, a great partnership with them and how much we appreciate uh, what they're doing for us and, and what unfortunately Liz isn't here to hear it but she does an amazing job writing these grants and working with them to get as much money for the town and she works with the chiefs and uh, and, then, and all the other departments to try to uh, to put together a comprehensive list of needs that um, can be met through that fund so um, well done to, well done to the team all right, so that's all we've got in um, open session at this time. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go into a brief executive session, and then we will return to open session uh, to announce some votes, if any are taken during executive session. So I'll make a motion that we adjourn, I'm sorry, that we um, go into executive session for the purpose of number two, and that's to conduct strategy sessions and preparations for negotiations with non-union personnel, or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. <coughs> and specifically, this will be um, contracts negotiations uh, on a police sergeant's contract and executive info coordinator. So we've got a motion to go into executive session. Do we have a second? Second. All right, roll call vote. Mr. Trainer. All right. Mrs. Joy, yes. And Mr. Russo? Yes. All right. <clears throat> I would like to have everyone to remember Memorial Day. Okay. Um, so the, with the parade will start off at 10. We've got some of the um, chiefs. Do we uh, have a meeting before then? We might have one meeting. Okay. I have to look. We'll have. Okay. Mm, yeah, we will because we're going to have to do after the. Okay. You know. Okay, after the election. Election and everything. Okay. So, but just to remind you, I'm still looking for cars, antique cars, tractors. Okay. Uh huh. Um, so one of the, the officers, I don't know if you saw that email, Chief. Yep. That um, Caitlin's going to have her horse lead the parade this year. Oh, nice. So it's really nice. Very exciting. Very exciting. So she was on the equestrian police unit. Um, before she came over here, so really very well connected, um, even in town too, with like a lot of like the equestrian horse facilities. Right. So 
She's, we're going to have a Plimpton horse on the, on the parade. Yeah. <laughs> Very, Very nice. nice. Yeah. Very nice. On her own, went out and, and upfitted the horse. And did some badges on her own. Did some really cool thing. Oh, so that nice. Nice. Yeah, I was really excited. Uh, Thank you. What's your last name? Mulaney. I noticed that she wasn't on the uh, website. Yeah, she's been busy working on the school resource and getting the school resource officer to yeah, which kind of changing the guard, so to speak, and moving people around. She's actually, um, which we're also excited for, is that we, we already know our school resource office team set a place for next year. She's going to be one of them. So I had a lot of parents reach out to me. They, they love having her down there. Same thing with Robert Orr. Great. Um, so that team's already set in place, so we're excited with the new program on that as well. So. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Okay, so we've got a motion to go into a executive session and the vote. So um, do we need Chris to stay? Um, I don't know. How long are we going to be in executive session? Not too long. I I believe so. We shouldn't be. Um, All right. I, I yeah. Think we have to announce. The could vote. he stay for like five minutes? Yeah. Chris, could you stay for like five minutes? We're just going to have a brief executive session. No, I just turn off the recording here. Great. And then. Um, then we'll come back, and then um, we, we need to announce some votes. It's a nice night out. Get a little later. We'll be. Yeah, we won't take a, long. There's a ball game out there. <laughs> okay, you All right, thank you, Chris. All right, so we are back in open session. Uh, we would like to make an announcement of some votes that we took in executive session. Uh, the first was to appoint Nathan Valente as a sergeant effective May 6, 2024 through May, uh, May 5, 2027. Kevin Brower is a sergeant May 7, 2024 through May 6, 2027. And Lauren Grady as a executive information coordinator July 1, 2024 through June 30, 2027. So uh, those were the votes we took in executive session and um, we are pleased to announce those um, uh, appointments uh, to a couple of sergeants and an executive information coordinator. So thank you very much. All right, so I think that's it for tonight. Our next meeting is going to be on the 15th, and then we have a meeting also on the 20th. So um, motion to adjourn? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, good night. Good night. <laughs>